there have been some changes since the last episode. I've done some progression on my own, and I've added some mods as well, including one that should overhaul our experience getting to the end. Probably the most immediate thing you'll notice is that we now have dynamic sounds installed. So you know all the effects I do in my videos with the water and the wind and all that stuff? This mod basically does that for me. So when playing the game, I'm going to be using dynamic sounds because it adds more than just audio as well, like the steam from the magma blocks on the water. Little details like that just make me so happy. But what are we doing today, you might ask? One of the biggest things I wanted to focus on with this mod pack was aesthetic. And so the visuals, how everything feels, that's that's kind of the core focus. So in between episodes, I did a subathon where we spent, I think, around six hours working on Blueprint. And one of the things we did was get ourselves a horse. So ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to Cogsworth. This is our new companion and best friend, and he's going to help us get everywhere much faster than walking. Until we get a train system going on, I feel like this is going to be our main mode of transportation. But even when we do get trains, I still want to find a reason to use Cogsworth. Ooh. Okay, we are back home. What do we what do we do here? So first of all, I wanted to work on getting these girders sorted out, but I didn't have enough iron. So I went mining for a long time. In fact, I went on multiple mining sessions and we now have a decent amount. I actually remember having another stack of blocks, but we've just burned right through it. I got a stack and a half of diamond ore earlier today. So we're sitting at 35 and one diamond blocks, which is not bad at all. We've got lots of copper. We've got lots of redstone. We've got a decent amount of coal but the main thing was iron. So I'm using this cave as a temporary location for an iron farm. Now this design was not made by me, this was made by Batsy Von Fangles, and it is very compact and hopefully very fast, but I haven't had a chance to use it yet. Behind me, I've dug out a little bit of a hole for a steam generator, which is also designed by Batsy, but I don't have the resources for that yet. So later on today, we're gonna get this up and running. But before we do the iron farm, I do actually wanna get started on something else that might be a little bit more difficult, I'm not actually sure. So in the last episode, I mentioned that there's a villager rework, and there are a few different things that are different from my villagers than a vanilla one. If I take a quick ride over to the village, there is something that I would like to show you. There is our librarian down there. I've already got feather falling from Mark. Thank you, Mark. My boots are now perfect. Aside from mending, one thing I want to do is have my villagers free roam, so I don't want them locked up in a spot. So Mark, just please don't die. Now I got lucky rolling Mark's trades. I didn't have to cycle through over and over and over again to find it, but that will not be the case for mending. One of the things that differs about villagers is the fact that if you want a specific trade trade you have to put a book in the lectern that you want. This means I actually have to go out in the world and find those books and they'll sell me one level higher than the, oh, I'm invisible. They'll sell me one level higher than the book that is currently in the lectern. So if we can get a mending book, we can get infinite mending books, which is slightly annoying because in the last episode, I used my only mending book on this pickaxe, which has been a great help, but it also means that I no longer have a source of mending. But remember where we found the mending book last time? We found it in an ancient city, so I'm willing to bet we might be able to find another one in another ancient city. And it just so happens when I went mining earlier, I happened to stumble across a second one. And you can see here, I've done a little bit of off camera mining. I can't remember the last time I dug this much in a strip mine. But yes, let's go over to our brand new ancient city. Wait, did I say ancient city? I meant two ancient cities. This is the ancient city I dug to before. I dug up, I heard the skulk sensor and discovered there was an ancient city here. But I actually discovered there's another one right behind us and another one directly to the left of us. So all the way over here, there is a third one, which means there is a high likelihood that we get a mending book at one of these. Another thing I've changed since the last episode is how my voice chat interaction works. So if you remember, I had it set to when I speak in game, it actually picks it up with the skulk sensors. I've modified that a little bit. So now it detects it even when I'm crouched. So if I speak and I, I walk over here, you'll see it lights up. So I have to be pretty quiet or else I get a, I'm going to trigger the warden with my voice. Actually customize it to the certain decibel, which means I can talk at a lower volume, which theoretically means I can get away with speaking to you guys while standing next to them. So I just have to be very quiet. I think we can find just one mending book. That's all I really need. Oh, and you know what? I didn't bring wool. Hold on. We got to go back. Oh yeah. I should probably mention the new machinery too as well. So we've now got crushing wheels, which means I can turn cobblestone into gravel and I can turn gravel into sand and I can turn sand into something. I've expanded our water wheels just a bit here to withstand some extra stress. So that way we can hook up our press 
our deployer and a mixer all in the same contraption, but it also hooks up to this thing, which is a mechanical crafter. I forgot what these are called. And this thing uses a ton of stress. So I did, that's why I had to expand this over here. Now on 1.21, we have the auto crafter blocks. This is the create mod equivalent of that. It's a little bit more vanilla friendly since it's more than one block. I feel like this actually fits into vanilla Minecraft better than the auto crafter, but you got to admit the auto crafter and vanilla is pretty cool too. But yeah, now we have that. We've also got a smelter and cooker over here. Depending on if I have lava or fire, it will cook things accordingly. So if I have fire, it will cook things like food or clay into bricks. But if I have lava, then it smelts things like ores into their ingot forms. So some new, very useful machinery. These are things I thought I could do off camera because they were less important and I kind of wanted to get them out of the way. And now that those machines are made, I can focus on the more entertaining aspects of the video. We are, oh my gosh, these guys have been plaguing me for like the last week. They're just everywhere, I swear. I, I, I kill one team of them and then there's just a new one. Another thing I want to do today is come back here and actually excavate this trail ruin because I don't think I've actually done that yet uh, since 1.20 has been released. So in my Discord server, I occasionally will do live streams where I sit in a stage and I'll stream my game just like on YouTube, but it's a lot more low energy and I get to relax a bit, not worry about the algorithm, anything like that. But while we were doing one of those, I stumbled across this incredible hole which I think would be really cool for like a full scale mining operation. It's got the lush cave. It's very open. We have lots of room to build and looking up and just seeing this hole, I feel like just another elevator I, it might be in order maybe. So I have it marked on this map as mega mine, but there might be something over here that's even more worthy. While I was out looking for the horse during the subathon, I noticed a strange hole in the ground that I for some reason decided I need to look down this. I was quite fond of this area here. It's it's enclosed by the mountains just like our other spot is even more so it's closer to the village we can just knock down this forest here and we'd have a brilliant spot to build in but this hole right here caught my eye because oh my gosh <laughs> that is a cave so imagine if you will that we get rid of this forest here build something here maybe a factory of sorts and then dig this whole section down into this cave this could be our mining operation how crazy would that be now that would be a ton of work because this whole thing is stone and it's it's kind of on the edge of the giant cave so i don't know i mean maybe we do something here i'm not i'm not quite sure yet and it's it's really pretty and all but be a lot of work but if you guys have any ideas for this location do let me know i think this is just marvelous it's it looks absolutely bizarre and it's this might be one of the most massive caves i've ever seen in this game i'm, I'm not even kidding this is just oh and it goes right into the ancient city so we're gonna actually be over here anyways oh this was actually where we were this is not a different ancient city this is the one we were just at so just on the other side of this through the mouth of this portal here, and then, yeah, this is the, oh my gosh. All right, well, while I'm looking for sheep, I would like to introduce you to a new village that I've discovered. I don't know what to call this yet, so I would love to hear your suggestions in the comments. I feel like this is where we're going to do all of our trading. It's a very nice village. I believe this is just directly from Terralith, so they add their own custom villages that can generate. But I really like this place. I feel like we'll probably have our villagers here and trade with them, maybe help them build some nicer houses. But I think this is where we're going to have one of our train stations. I can't remember if I mentioned this or not, but I did say I wanted to have free roam villagers. I also want to have them in a place where they aren't just my house. So yeah, Yes, they'll be allowed to roam free, but they're also going to be far away from where we live. Convenience is not my number one priority, it's atmosphere. I feel like I say that word a lot. So we're going to make a train station here and we're going to get the train hooked up and then we'll be able to go between this place and our home. So yes, it will be slower, but it will be so much cooler. Okay, so I guess this is a good time to show off another new mod I've added. In this village somewhere, I'm not sure where he went, I spotted an orange cat and I want him. There he is. That's the guy. I want him. I want my cat. That's Miles. Miles will be in this world too. We need some fish and uh, the fish work a little bit differently now. This is from a mod called Boyd's and you'll notice that the fish actually work differently and they kind of swim away from me which is very annoying but <laughs> it looks so much better than the vanilla fish and I, I really like that. I just can't seem to get them. Come on. I'm gonna drown. Oh there's the fish. Oh they're all down here. Get them. Get them. There's so many. Come on. 
I'm going to run out of air. But yeah, that's another mod. Once I get a few fish, though, and I actually get to tame the cat, there is a third mod that I want to talk about. All right, surely 14 fish is enough. Miles isn't really a picky eater in real life, so maybe that, that should be a sufficient amount. Come on. Don't move. Yes, okay, we got the cat. Now look at this. Hopefully the mod is set up properly. I haven't touched the configs, but uh, let's see. Oh, no, I don't have the config set up. I am very sorry about that, buddy. You can have more. I, I am so sorry. All right, I think I fixed it. I changed the game rule. Yay, I don't, I don't, I can't hit the cat anymore. So this cat now should teleport to me whenever, wherever I am. I will never have to worry about losing my feline friend again. All right, our companions are safely back home. Let's get ready to go on our Skulky adventure and take our incredible mind down back to the ancient city. Now, one thing I do want to mention is I'm thinking maybe I won't do as much of an expansion on this shoot as I originally was thinking I would do. And that is because if we do do a full mine operation, I think I want to dedicate more of that time to that project instead. So if we do something much larger with this, I've said do do like twice now. If we do something larger with that mine, then I probably I'm going to do that later down the line instead. However, I still want to focus on getting those girders in. That way, it's at least somewhat complete. Since I've added dynamic surroundings, I thought it would be really cool to incorporate some water elements to the side of it. As you're going down the elevator, you just see a ton of different atmospheres and biomes and stuff and things. And OK, now we get now we got to be quiet. I just want to make sure we're quiet. Can't remember what level I need to speak at. OK, not that level. Okay, well, I clearly did not secure that very well. Is there another one? Ooh, there. I need to be careful. Let's go. I'm done. Okay, I think I'm back near the near the start. Yep, this is it. We're back. Yay! We did it. That was horrifying. Oh my gosh, that was so much more nerve-wracking than last time. I think I'm gonna end up editing it differently just so you guys can see how much like the the silence made a difference. I was I was like genuinely scared too. We triggered it twice, and I think. I think it goes off on its third or fourth, so we were very close to summoning a warden. We have returned to the surface. Okay, that means we can theoretically buy more mending books. Let's try this out. I, I forget which... There it is. There it is. Okay. So let's take Cogsworth and head over... I'm so disoriented. There it is. Let's head over to the village and see if putting the mending book on top of the lectern makes it so I can buy more of them. Okay, Barney's looking like he wants to be our librarian. He's going to head inside. Nope, he's not going to head inside. Okay, can I just put it... Okay, Lester, you're going to be our librarian. So let's go ahead and put this... Excuse you. Let's put this on... Excuse you. Can I not... Stop that. Get up. Get off. Stop. No. Stop. Both of you. Please. No. No. Please. No. Okay, this might be a little bit harder than I thought. Oh, hi, Mark. If I put this here. Barney. How do I put the mending books on? Okay, well, something isn't working right. I'm, I'm not even able to put the book down. So that's a problem. Okay, I'm going to try something. So the video I just watched showed the person using a lectern in their offhand. That doesn't seem to work either. Oh! What did I do? What? I'm so confused. How did I do that? Barney, you didn't have a job before. Let's let's work with you again. This time you get give me mending. No. How does how does this work? <gasps> Fortune three. Okay, that's the wrong book. But that's that's not bad, Lester. I was not expecting villagers to be this difficult. I, I really thought it was going to be more fun, not not more tedious. 
I was clearly proven wrong. It is actually midnight in real life. Like this is taking way this is taking too long. Oh, <gasps> it worked. Okay, so I think I just had to run a function that I did not know I could do. So yeah, that's silk touch, and if I take the book. Oh, it's mending, it works, that's perfect. I'm 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 literally one emerald short. Okay, that's amazing though. That's actually awesome. That makes me very happy. All right, Barney, you, you have earned privileges of of going outside. I'll let you live. Be free. Anyway, the way it works now is villagers can only trade up to level three by default. So if we want efficiency, we'll have to combine books to get efficiency four and then put that in the lectern and the villager will then sell us efficiency four. We'll combine it to efficiency five and then eventually we'll be able to get efficiency five books from our villagers. OK, now that I say it out loud, that does sound more tedious, but you know what? I think that's way better than the vanilla circumstances and I'm all for it. Just it's a little bit harder, but it, it makes them feel more important in the world. It doesn't feel tedious. It feels much more interactive than just breaking and replacing a lectern over and over and over, which is still the case, but at least we can work from somewhere rather than only accepting a level five trades. This is what I've been working on for the last 20 minutes or so. Uh, I want to grab just Barney, just just Barney. Nope, just the one just just Barney, thanks very much. Oh, he's going in. I added a mod just now that allows villagers to pathfind to emeralds because their pathfinding seems to be broken. And now we have a solution with holding emeralds. You can't get to me, right? Perfect. You can. Hello, Steve. So this is what I have in mind. I've got my mending book here. And hopefully, if I put this on here, Barney should change to the mending book. And then subsequently, when I take it away, it changes back to Silk Touch, meaning all I have to do to, to change the enchantments is just replace the books on here. So I have all of my enchanted books that I'm going to need, and then I just put them on the lectern and he'll change. Oh, <gasps> it does work with Swift Sneak. Well, that's uh, that's that's wild. Um, but yeah, we can just put our books here and he'll trade us for the books we want to trade. I actually don't need the Silk Touch because that's his default one, but you know, I, whatever, I'll just put it there anyway. We can trade for Respiration 2, combine them in an anvil, get Respiration 3, and then put that in our bookshelves here, and then we'll forever have access to Respiration 3. So let's go ahead and grab our Mending book, talk to Barney here, and grab ourselves that is Mending. Good? Cool. We've got a Mending book. That is so cool. I love this so much. All right, so I put on my thinking goggles and I wanted to get a power source for this iron farm, but the one that I've constructed is not powerful enough to actually withstand it. You'll see if I, I took a I took a shaft and I went all the way through here and I said, OK, I'm going to connect this up. That should be enough stress. It's overstressed. So I have to find another steam engine to run this thing. And I think I know just the guy. So in World's Fair, I used to design for a steam engine by a man named Robodoing. And that was just the most flawless steam engine ever. It worked perfectly for everything I needed it to and more. And so I want to reuse that. So I contacted him. Since the video is no longer available to, to, to watch, I asked him, hey, do you still have that schematic? And he was like, I can do you one better. I got an upgraded version. So we're going back to Robodoon's design. This is a really great and simple design for something that uses less stress, but for my needs, it was not <laughs> enough for this machine. So let's replace this machine with something a little bit more powerful. In about half an hour later, the new engine has been completed. Now, I didn't realize how just how similar this was going to be to the World's Fair one. It's it's basically identical. And theoretically, all I should have to do now is place in all of the lava sources and hopefully we'll have a fully functioning steam engine. Okay. That looks lava logged. I think I've gotten every lava source. I grab my backpack. There we go. Come back down here. And I think I'm all good. Here's something I should also mention. I found a way to make my backpack even more efficient. So it's similar to a bundle in that it only can store a certain amount of uh, stackable items and a certain amount of, uh, what are they called? Unstackable items. I don't know why it took me so long to remember that but it doesn't account for these sacks here. The way that these sacks from supplementary work are if you have two sacks with items in them, that's okay, you'll be completely fine. But if you have a third one with something in it, then you'll get an effect on you that makes you slower and it's just annoying. But it doesn't account for that in the backpack. So if I take those three sacks with items in it, this one had a clipboard, we have spruce logs, copper sheet, and then I wear that, you'll notice that the effect goes away in a few seconds. I have those three sacks in the backpack. 
And see, there's the clipboard, the spruce logs, the copper sheets. I'm wearing those sacks. They have nine slots each, but it doesn't give me the effect because I'm not directly carrying it. Now, this is an incompatibility, but I hope they never fixed it because this is incredibly helpful. Now we have the machine up and running. The only thing I believe that is left to do is put that on this drain and then crank this. So the way this machine works is there's a mechanical arm in the machine right there that will take a bucket uh, that's in. Where is it? There's a, a depot here and uh, oh my gosh, this is really confusing there's a bucket somewhere in this machine that the mechanical arm will grab and then fill up these that bucket with the lava and then it will put it somewhere in the machine and say hey use that to fill up these guys here that will give this guy that will give them power which then activates our boiler that this is making no sense at all hold on let me summarize this even easier arm grab lava lava fuel burner burner fuel engine engine give power power mean happy but until the dripstone generates enough lava to power all of these blaze burners i'm not going to be able to power the engine so i have to wait until these fill up with lava until then i think i'm going to be waiting for a while but that does give me a chance to do something else another thing that i've been doing in between episodes is gathering the resources for the starter base something about my mods are incompatible with one another i think it's bloom in nature and create mod there's something that prevents it from working with the schematic i think it crashed hello ash i think it crashed last time i tried to put it into the world so we're going to use Lightmatica to build it and I'm going to do it by hand. And honestly, I prefer doing it by hand. The machinery stuff, I could care less if that was schematicized, that's a word, into the world like we did with those machines, like we did with the elevator. But the actual structures, I enjoy building those by hand. So boohoo, it doesn't work, that's okay. But while those lava sources are generating, let's get to building the Tinkerer's Workshop. Okay, well, that's the base. Um, it's a little undecorated, but we're going to get to that. We have some spectators here who are very interested in my build. I appreciate the support. I still got the interiors to do, but I did want to focus on the shape of it for right now. So you'll notice I'm using some pretty interesting blocks. Most of the blocks on these walls are from a mod called Chipped, which is that these workbenches are for. If we take a block like a spruce log, you can see there are a bunch of different variations that are available. So this is a variation of the spruce log called the carved log. And then I think this one's called Reinforced. Yep. Chip just allows us a ton of different variation. There's a ton of different styles for pretty much every block in the game. But it just adds for so much more variation and texture. And I just I just love the way it looks. And look at these doors. These doors look awesome. Well, that's a shame. I think Diagonal Windows, which is another mod we have in here, is actually messing with the Create Mod Windows. So that sucks. These were supposed to be two tall windows, but I, I got to figure out something to fix that. Outside, you'll see, just like in my Cold Craft base, I've used pistons as a foundation. And I think this just fits in wonderfully with the tinkerer's vibe you also notice i have some shafts going up the building and i'll show you what those are for later but the other thing i wanted to talk about was the bellows now this is a utility item this is from supplementaries i don't have anything to smelt right now but the premise of the bellow is that when this is active it will keep your furnaces alive for longer but it also works as a really nice pillaring block so i thought it would be cool to use them as part of a structure and I think that turned out pretty well. I really like the way this looks. And I'm using the all expensive lecterns as a nice decorative piece as well. Lots of depth with this block. You can see it works to kind of hold up the top structure, but at the same time, it has some angular spots. So it has some variation. And it's not just completely flat like most of the blocks in this game. Out here though, you'll see I've used andesite walls instead of lecterns because this shares a wall with the outside world. And because I didn't double line them, I had to figure out how to make this look good from the inside and from the outside. If I had the lecterns, you'll see it, you could just see right through it. So I had to make do, and I chose to do andesite walls instead. 
There is a little bit of a, you can you can see out the world, but we're not gonna talk about that. That andesite shaft on the inside goes up to this top wall here and under the floor here. Now this isn't actually relevant for this floor. This is relevant for the downstairs where the actual workshop will be. This up here is going to be my office because for some reason I feel like I need an office in every world. So let's actually work on that now. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it just cause I don't wanna do this all on camera, but I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's done. See you in a second. And there she is. I finally added all the decoration. The interior is complete. Let's go check it out. First thing you notice, we got some cool flowers. Yippee for flowers. Okay, first of all, we got the front room. This room is kind of just to break up the Tinker's Workshop and the section that goes up to the office. The Tinker's Workshop, we have a press that has a chest that goes into another chest so I can automate the press. We've also got our schematic table and our carpenter's workbench in here. So the, one of the blocks from chipped has been moved outside inside. And eventually I do want to get a building at least for each profession or at least each chipped workbench because I think that'd be really cool to have themed workbenches. There are six more that we have to worry about. We've got the botanist, we've got the glass blower, there's the carpenters, the loom, the mason, the alchemy table, and the tinkering table. So they're very similar to the villagers, but it's a little bit different. And I think it's because it's a little bit more themed, we're going to have some fun uh, delving into that. We've got our toolbox here, which I haven't actually used, so I'm not sure how useful these are, but look at the animation. That is so cool. We've got some storage, we've got a blueprint, and we got some basic furnaces. These pipes don't actually do anything. I think it would be cool to get this uh, whistle functional though. I just don't know how I would do that. This is probably my favorite thing in the whole room. We've got this connector here hooked up to another connector with the light on it. You can actually turn this on and off, but I'm going to keep it on so I can keep this place mob proof. But it's hooked up with a wire from Create Crafts and Additions, meaning it kind of looks like it's just kind of hanging down. Maybe you could pull the light down and have it angled at something you're working on on the table. I just think this is such a cool detail. I love this. Now, in addition to this press, the power also goes up through the wall and then through the ceiling and up to the middle of this workbench. And that is for, excuse you, Miles. Thank you, not stay there, that's fine. This is for our back tank, which we'll put here to have it charge. So if I grab this back tank here and I put it on the table, when this is hooked up, it will start using that rotational power to charge this up and we'll be able to go on underwater adventures and whatever else this is used for. I'm not sure. They've added some new features to it, so we're going to have to mess around with those later. Moving on back to the front room, we've got some hidden storage here with a cabinet. I'm not sure if we're actually going to end up using that, but going upstairs, welcome to the office. This is a little bit small, but I think it will work well for our needs. I think I'm going to have a separate building for a bedroom because th there was not enough room up here for it. That power source from down below also stretches up to activate a cuckoo clock, which again, once we get power, it will go off twice a day. And then finally, we can sit down and take a seat at our new desk. I love this. This is so cool. I feel right at home. I feel very tink tinkery. That's that's probably not a word. The build came together super nicely and I cannot wait to add on to this neighborhood. We're speaking of, by the way, what should we name this area? I'm, I want to have a whole like city, so a storage building and then maybe those those workbenches down there. All of those could be over here, too. We'll have the river coming through. There will be a uh, railroad, but we do need a name for this place. So in the comments, let me know your ideas and maybe I'll pick one of them. And behind me over here, you'll see that there is a frame that has nothing on it. And this is where we're going to use an excuse to go dig up that archaeology site. OK, so if my memory serves me right, I think it was just over this hill. Not too far. There it is. Yep. OK. So we gotta be super delicate. I've, I've never actually dug one of these before. A, a, a brown candle. All right, cool. Not everything is gonna be ancient treasures. But that just means we gotta be digging a little bit further. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay, I'm blown away. I did not realize how large Trio Ruins were. This is so cool. So I thought it was just gonna be a small structure and I think they are randomly generated. So there is some variation. But look how far it goes. There's there's four different directions it goes and there's different rooms. This is a dead end. But like, look at this hallway. There's like rooms off to the side. You can see there was a pathway here and they had some houses. This is so neat. I didn't know this was a thing. I knew trail ruins existed, but like I didn't realize they were this like in depth. I love the way I feel just walking around in here. It's very enclosed, but it's very colorful. The packed mud and the glazed terracotta just look so good together. And what I found here kind of tells a story too. So this seems like it's some kind of hub area, maybe like a, like a, I don't know, a dance floor. Uh, but then over here you find there's a loom. So maybe this is a place that people made different uh, banners and clothes and I, 
I don't know. Back here, there are a few campfires that have been snuffed out. Maybe this was some kind of big furnace room for cooking things. Down this hallway to the right, you have a... What's this room? You have kind of a spiral up. This like a tower up to a cartography table. Maybe this is where a, 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 a mapper... Those are just cartographers. But there's just a story with the with the architecture. I'm not sure what this is, but it looks super cool. The, the brick and the terracotta, just those colors, those colors work. These two rooms are identical. I'm not quite sure what they are. Maybe there's some living spaces. I, I don't know. It, it, it seems a little small for a full-on village, but... Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Um, let me show you some of the loot we got. Oh, wait, look at this, look at this. I forgot about this. So I discovered, um, and I think this is just random generation. I don't think they plan this far ahead. This room connected up to a cave that when you travel all the way up, it, it actually leads you right outside. Hold on, almost there, almost there, big reveal. Over here, it takes us up to the top. So this was technically exposed the whole time. If we just went down that cave, we would have gotten to the trail ruin. That is so cool. Like what? How? What? All right, now I got that off my chest. I can I can show you guys the loot I found. Okay, I believe this is everything. We've got a bunch of different smithing templates, a bunch of different sherds. Which one should we put in our office? I'm thinking maybe the creeper one. That was the one that first caught my eye. All right, so let's go ahead and put our shirt here. And yeah, that looks super cool. I'm thinking maybe we actually put the clipboard here and then put something in the middle, but I'm not quite sure what I want to do yet. But with that, the interior is done. I, I don't think there's anything else I'm missing. That's that's the whole office. That's the whole workshop. The tinker's bench is ready to go, except for the power. We, that's Oh, yeah, I have to do the power. Let's do that real quick. Much time has passed now. It is actually the next day, but I finally got the machine up and working. It is at full capacity. It has been running consistently. Everything is working perfectly, and I am very happy with this. So once again, two worlds in a row. Thank you, Roba. So how it works is we got lava up the top. When you have dripstone underneath the block with lava source on it, then it will dispense drips of lava, eventually making lava sources. There are pipes underneath it that suck out all the lava and then dispense it into this fluid what is this uh, container fluid container here once we've got the fluid container completely full then we just have a backup of lava so that's why these aren't getting sucked up but then it will take that lava and spits it out through the top here there is a valve that pumps the lava into this spout this spout shoots the lava through this funnel onto this depot which you can't really see but there's a, there's a spot here for a bucket. Once there's a bucket there, the spout will fill up the bucket with lava. And then there is another funnel here that has a filter on it for, this is so confusing, hold on. Being a steam engine, this thing needs heat. So that's what the lava is for. The lava provides heat for the engine. Once the, um, hold on. And steam engines need heat. So that's what the, the arm for. Being a steam engine, it needs heat to work. So that mechanical arm fills up all of these braze burners, but I can't, ex this is like my fourth attempt recording this. The mechanical arm grabs the lava, places it in these burners, and that makes it turn on. The fact that this is so compact makes it really difficult to explain, but hopefully it makes some, some sense. Basically, the only thing you need to know is that the whole thing is self-sufficient now. We shouldn't have to touch it ever again. It works perfectly. And now we have power for our iron farm. This output shaft is shooting through the world all the way over here to our machine and through the wall up here to the side of our house. So once we hook up the shaft down here, everything should be receiving power. And I hear the machine working. Let's go back up to the top. Oh, I think it's going. Yep, there it is. This is the iron farm. So hopefully, and it doesn't sound like it's working. Something's not right here. I broke the machine. It looks like the gravel is getting shot out the side when it should be not doing that. Hold on. Where's the clutch? Uh oh, I've got a lever clutch uh oh that didn't work it's still going how do i turn this thing off this clutch isn't hooked up to anything what what is this supposed to do <laughs> okay i know how to stop it i know how to stop it let's get rid of this there we go whole thing is off okay i think i figured it out i think the problem was these were spinning the wrong direction so instead of crushing it it was it was doing absolutely nothing if my theories are correct i gotta power that what just happened Oh, that's a that's a clutch, not a gear shift. Now I think I have the right piece. But before we even start this, I just wanted to show how efficient this device is. This was up for like 20 seconds, and this is how much gravel it produced. That is absurd. If I place this block and then power that, that changes the direction. And I think it's working. I think. Um, well, 
I, um, so far it has made no iron. Okay, I think it's working now. The only thing I changed was the direction that this was spinning. I'm not sure what that clutch was doing, but I've moved it over here to make it a little bit more convenient. This is doing absolutely nothing, so we can actually get rid of that. But I do think the problem was that this was spinning the wrong direction. So now these are spinning clockwise and anti-clockwise and actually crushing the cobblestone into gravel. Eventually, I want to get both of these machines up above the world and in proper buildings because I don't like hiding this machinery. I want to have it decorative. I think the next thing I want to do is get a storage building hooked up. I think I want to do it here, but I'm not sure yet. We've still got to create the pathway that goes up to the elevator and the river that comes down from the top of the mountain so i gotta do some planning but for now i gotta move all this stuff out of here this is ridiculous but i think that's gonna do it for this episode let me know what you guys think of the new base i am super excited we've gotten a first building in here i think it looks wonderful once we get some more buildings in the surrounding area i think it's gonna blend in a lot more because right now it stands out a little bit and just a reminder if you've got any ideas for names for this area please do let me know i'd love to hear them have a wonderful day i will see you on the next one bye bye